Good evening and welcome to everybody watching us. Today's meeting closes the year's forum for the future of culture, the motto of which was solidarity and peer. The programmers of this year's forum concluded that we can't talk about solidarity in here or about the future of culture in general without taking a stand on what is the most pressing issue affecting the artistic or the theater community. These are stories coming to light of what was often years of um, abuse, uh, bullying and uh, sexual harassment in Polish theatre and in drama schools. Today's uh, discussion will be about this issue, which is very difficult for all of us, but which will determine and shape our discussion about the future of culture, especially institutional culture. The moderator will be Iga Dzieciuchowicz, who is a journalist, a writer and a feminist. She's uh, currently writing a book called Theatre, a Dysfunctional Family. Good afternoon, and now let me introduce my guests, uh, whom I invited to take part in this debate for a reason. Um, uh, let me begin by introducing uh, Patricia Babitska, who is a playwright. She is a former employee of Teatr Bagatella in Krakow, and together with her colleagues, she decided to expose the manager of the theater, the director of the theater, and his behavior. Monika Jarosińska, who is a graduate of the dance theater department in Bytom, part of the Krakow Drama School. She was uh, one of the protagonists of my documentary about abuse by Pavel Pazini. Uh, Ula Kijak, who is a director and activist, uh, she's a member of the Stage Directors Guild. Bartosz Szydłowski, director of the Wajnianowa Theatre and the uh, founder and director of the International uh, Theatre Festival, The Divine Comedy. Monika Klonowska, a uh, psychologist, a trainer and consultant working with cultural institutions. Let me first say why I invited you to part in this uh, debate. You all represent uh, various positions one can have in theater. Uh, Patricia for many years was an employee of uh, Teatr Bagatella. Monika is a recent uh, graduate of drama school. Bartosz has been in theater for years. He ran his own theater and I suppose he has a lot to say. Uh, Ula is a stage director and all of you have experienced abusive uh, behavior. So uh, maybe beginning with Patricia Babitska, can I ask you to tell us about this experience from your point of view, uh, Patricia? I'm here representing a group of nine women from Teatr Bagatella who decided to say no to stand up to two problems we faced in theater. The first was a systemic, it had to do with uh, abuse of a professional hierarchy, which you can call bullying. We talking among ourselves, we called it a czarist system, a totalitarian regime, and we felt uh, so oppressed. The uh, second issue has to do with uh, crossing, uh, not respecting physical boundaries. Um, uh, there were kisses. Mm, and uh, which were unwanted and face-to-face uh, -face meetings. At face-to-face -face meetings, the director uh, felt the need for touch, for physical touch, even if uh, it was touching your hand or your arm. Well, we know today that such behavior is not something we'd like to have in a work environment. And uh, those were the uh, two reasons that let us to put an end, put a stop to it. I realize that I'm speaking uh, 
on my own behalf. I'm, it's, man, it's much easier to do this as a group. Uh, neither of us were strong enough to do it on their own. Some of my uh, friends and uh, co-workers had uh, experienced this for 20 years. I was exposed to it four years myself and each of us regardless of uh, how long it took it was uh, too long and we felt that enough was enough each of us today and now two years after the event feel stronger for having said no, for having um, stood up for their own dignity. For us, it was a question of dignity. Uh, we are where we are today, also speaking with you, uh, looking at a uh, major problem in Polish theater. And I believe that it began with a single gesture, a gesture of opposition by a group of women, and it will lead to a systemic change. That's what I believe. Thank you. Monika Jarosińska. Good evening. First of all, let me say that I'm not a graduate. I'm in my fifth year. I'm writing my uh, MA thesis, so I'm still a student. I was exposed to violence not uh, directly, I didn't encounter abuse uh, directly. I was supposed to uh, substitute uh, for another actress uh, who was taken off a diploma show directed by Pavel Passini, and I quit. In, um, because I couldn't consent, or I had this uh, feeling that there was a report of, of abuse, of uh, sexual harassment, and nobody did anything about it. And after talking, after speaking to that person, I realized I wasn't able to keep um, acting in the diploma uh, show. After that, the uh, show, the rehearsals were um, stopped, and it turned out that the uh, person uh, was not the only injured party. And then, after the second report, the uh, second case, uh, procedures kicked in, in the school, in the drama school, uh, then, as a group, we were left to our own devices, because the procedure had uh, come to an end, and apart from writing a report, nothing else was done. One and that led, not provoked us maybe, or we just decided, we simply decided take it to the media, to specifically to you, Iga, to uh, bring it out into the open. We had this sense of powerlessness, and after your article, and I think that's uh, relevant, Many more people came forward uh, confirming or substantiating what might otherwise have been brushed under the carpet. I'm referring to the first complaint by the person who was treated badly and oppressively by the system. Ula. Ula. Good evening. I'm, I was taken by surprise by the question you asked us before we began, when you asked me to uh, say a few words about the abuse against uh, directors. For years, I've been looking at abuse as practiced by directors, so I had to look at my notes uh, to see the other side of the story. As as uh, stage directors, we can be victims of abuse. But my surprise um, maybe is a good opportunity to say that it's a chain, it's something that's carried forward. It's abuse 
Uh, proliferates, multiplies. We're in this vicious triangle of uh, victim, bystanders, and uh, perpetrators, and all three positions can be actually fluid. People can move from one position to another. And that's uh, fairly relevant because uh, in the light of the stories that uh, Patricia and uh, Monika mentioned just now, some uh, people can be ashamed to say that they had been exposed to oppression or bullying or abuse, but we have to remember that it's a whole spectrum. You can't equate uh, throwing things at a person or sexual harassment or long-term bullying and uh, vicious little sexist jokes or slurs or uh, not respecting someone, but uh, it all comes together to create a network, a web of abuse that, that exists. I think that abuse of directors, stage directors, can be uh, carried out at various levels, and it's often a kind of intangible, it's hard to put your finger on. And this uh, abuse so is uh, gender dependent. Uh, I was surprised to learn that my colleagues, my other female uh, stage directors who are younger than me or who have less experience uh, still uh, encounter these uh, situations where they come to an interview uh, to a theater director and uh, it, ha it begins with uh, a 30 minute or an hour long uh, story about how some time ago uh, stage directing uh, students uh, were only uh, hunt looking for husbands uh, that uh, they were just uh, window dressing and uh, just for show. Of course, that's not much uh, compared to what uh, the stories uh, you've uh, mentioned just now, but it's something that needs to be overcome. It's something and it does leave its mark on your psyche. Even though we have a very feminized profession, there are very many women stage directors. And uh, getting back to what you said about me being a member of the Guild of Stage Directors, I'm a member of the Guild of Polish Men and Women Stage Directors. It's a different uh, set of experiences. When I'm uh, talking to my female colleagues, we get uh, instances, uh, question, uh, examples of uh, sexist behavior by actors, by technicians, I already mentioned uh, theater directors, but it all seems to uh, invalidate uh, the experience or your position. It means to uh, it, it all it all seems to want to uh, question whether you're right for the job as a woman. And in this uh, profession, uh, one th and uh, perhaps now is not the time to talk about it, but it's a big problem. We have economic uh, oppression. Let me give you, just to give you an example, when starting out or budding, uh, if you're a rookie, if you're making your debut, or if it's your second or third show, I'm only uh, talking about work in theater, because we also um, keep saying that our work begins before rehearsals start, we have to uh, do a lot of uh, preparation, but uh, once we're in the theater, and that can take two or three months uh, to prepare, uh, to produce a show, then you're paid 3,000 zlotys for the whole period. And I, as a young uh, director, and that's something that uh, hasn't been explored sufficiently, it's not transparent and people are reluctant to talk about it because it's humiliating and it's a difficult subject. Of course, one thing we come up against is abuse or abusive uh, behavior. It, uh, which aims to undermine our self-esteem when dealing with institutions, uh, so largely in contacts with the directors of these institutions. And uh, when, we're ta when we uh, talk about directors, we say, oh, he's a nice guy, he uh, answers emails. 
Yeah, Yankee uh, answers uh, the phone. Wonderful. While it would seem that this is just basic uh, courtesy, but turns out it isn't. And I've been in the uh, business 15 years now, and uh, every now and then I get a contract that's uh, written in such a way that when I read it, I want to crumple it up and throw it away, because though the wording, the language, seems to be, uh, in, seems to uh, want to make me feel uh, bad or like uh, garbage because of all the restrictions or the penalties, everything I have to do, uh, and then it, there's in no way does it uh, look after or protect my interests. Uh, of course, this is largely because the uh, lawyers uh, writing these contracts uh, don't entirely understand the nature of uh, creative artistic work, and that's uh, probably a problem, but uh, signing the contract uh, comes at the end of the recruitment process, or uh, it's a very difficult uh, process, and uh, once you, um, so you look for the nice guy directors, and don't always uh, find them, and the contract, uh, once we finally uh, get a promise or get an okay, the contract can be like a nail in your coffin, and uh, you, it makes you need, it makes you want to approve yourself again. It's uh, another kind of form of oppression, and uh, this abuse uh, does occur, especially in the uh, or at the beginning or when people are just starting out in the profession. Our guild. I uh, keep getting uh, reports of these things happening. There are, for instance, cases where of dismissive behavior by actors uh, who are uh, recognized, uh, who are acclaimed actors, especially uh, when it comes to young female directors. Uh, they want to uh, show that the directors are ignorant and uh, have no right uh, to where they are, or no right to make any uh, demands. Or One thing that was very uh, humiliating for me, I remember uh, discussions about uh, working conditions. Uh, for instance, you have to explain that somebody who uh, goes to another town to work for three months uh, and uh, it's, uh, have a single room, have an armchair, uh, a kettle where they can make themselves some tea, or for there not to be rot under the bed, that would also be nice if uh, the living conditions were at least half decent. And uh, that's probably due to the fact that we most often work as freelancers, so we're outside the system. We're not covered by the labor code, and we're not seen as employees who have rights. So, we need to basically fight for everything. At the moment, something that happens very often, that we often have yet in our guild, we need to support our members in their uh, conflict uh, with uh, institutions. Oh, for instance, if the uh, if work on a show was uh, cut short or suspended because of the pandemic and the theater, the institution doesn't want to pay, they're shirking their responsibilities, refusing to sign contracts, even though that's uh, not uh, legal, even though, but it still happens, and um, even if they have no right to do so. And uh, one thing that uh, causes this uh, sense of powerlessness are the clashes with decision makers with, uh, for instance, the authorities who run theaters. Sometimes uh, directors are on our side, sometimes they're not. There are cases of uh, censorship, but as I said, it's a very big topic uh, with various issues. Uh, Bartek, how do you feel, having heard what uh, Ula said? Well, so-so, but I think that you need instead 
to paint a broader picture, to show the big picture, I personally believe, and it's not something I experienced firsthand. I'm trying to look after the artists we invite to cooperate with us. I want to make things clear from the beginning, but I think it's that's not uh, the main thing that uh, stage directors experience, and naturally it's worth uh, talking about, but the picture is uh, far more complicated. Uh, two things uh, to begin with. I believe that abuse, oppression is something that will be around forever, we can't avoid it. And uh, even uh, the whole idea is, uh, it all depends on what position we take with respect to abuse and oppression. The whole situation that happened that we had is a symptom, it uh, draws attention, and the fact that it all came out uh, makes, th makes things better. Because I believe that stigmatizing, uh, pointing out, uh, calling attention to certain mechanisms, means that we'll be more uh, vigilant, attentive, and uh, we w people who have abusive uh, tendencies will be more careful, will uh, may maybe um, try not to do that or restrain themselves. And uh, remember, I personally believe that the whole uh, anti-abuse uh, movement including the Me Too uh, movement, uh, is in a way a derivative of a narrative, a discussion that uh, was uh, present in culture for a long time. Uh, in theaters and in other institutions, of course, uh, things happen, but uh, the work of artists um, who want to call attention to these things in Polish uh, theater and also around the world, so all of this uh, leads to uh, bringing out people's needs, uh, helping people express those needs in a more resolved and open way. The reason I'm saying this is that, for me personally, cultural institutions are spaces of hope, and this, in spite of uh, our environment, in spite of everything that's going on around us, I think that we're living in an environment where abuse is being aggravated, that the uh, directors of institutions are experiencing this. They're uh, caught in uh, a sort of uh, trap in that the there are unclear uh, rules for evaluating their work. There are pitfalls uh, along the way, and it a lot depends on the... Uh, a lot is left to the discretion of the governing body the authorities run into the theater. And uh, so even if you try to do everything by the book, uh, then there's uh, so much room for discretion. I mean, cultural institutions are a place where risks are taken. When uh, organizing the Divine Comedy Festival, I always uh, said that uh, Polish theater can be proud of especially uh, a number of theaters which uh, have done their homework, which have uh, achieved a lot. Uh, they're all open to you for young artists, uh, open for uh, people just starting out in the business, uh, creating opportunities to grow, and often this is an unconditional um, system. So uh, there is room for unexpected things, uh, things that aren't uh, formatted. And that's the way institutions should operate. Uh, they should generate, or maybe they should shatter uh, the comfort zone of the audience or of the public uh, to, show, to show things in a different and unexpected light. But the structural expectation, the expectation on the part of the authorities is different. On the one hand, there is this attempt to make institutions utilitarian, pragmatic, to define what they're there for, what their purpose is. So we have uh, one party that's uh, trying to make it um, profitable, or um, and in basically as uh, theater directors, as uh, directors of theaters, I feel that uh, for the past uh, few years, it's been our job to uh, explain uh, what the institution is there for, and it's a struggle for survival. A teatr Wajnia, which I 
run is uh, different uh, than a large uh, theater, a large institutional uh, theaters which have years of tradition, which have rules and regulations and a whole formal structure that's uh, very elaborate and um, but Teatr Wajnia, and it's also something I experienced and experienced. Uh, well, when I was uh, looking back at my career, I think that I'd say that as a student in drama school, uh, back even back then, when I uh, came up against a very hierarchical way of communicating with artists and expectations by uh, institutions, I chose to be, go it alone, to be independent. So my response to potential oppression by institutions was to uh, start out on my own, set up an independent association that later became an institution, an institution that uh, by design and, and that was to uh, reinvigorate the uh, borough, its neighborhood, a new way of communicating with the outside world, a theater project. So uh, there's no um, reper repertory, there's no uh, ensemble. And uh, so to avoid the trap that institutions fall into when they become institutions, when they become uh, bureaucratized, when they um, become resistant to, emo to emotions, to the unexpected, when they are no longer willing or ready to uh, cross the line. And uh, the various uh, intangible things that uh, really can be quantified. So that can be a problem, and I think that today Day. Really, uh, you shouldn't, uh, there's nothing to envy uh, theater directors because there's a lot of pressure, their position's not enviable. There's a lot of pressure. We live in a, a society where there's the language of oppression is uh, sanctioned. There's, uh, there would look at the political choices, the public uh, debate. Uh, so the language of exclusion and oppressive language is all around us. Look at the way it works uh, for me. It's, I have a sense of a failure because I think that everything I've done, everything I'm doing, the purpose of that is to consider to look at a community uh, thinking and to look at the fundamental values as a community and uh, create a place that in an authentic uh, in a true in a true and genuine way would uh, follow these values and uh, develop them but the um, environment around me uh, is uh, slightly off-putting is a little mm, terrifying I would say this pressure and again it's a chain of oppression. It's like in um, families, uh, functional families. There is this pressure to be effective, there is this pressure to be successful, and the uh, director of a theater feels this uh, pressure they have to deal with it. So there's uh, economic audits or um, and um, evaluation, a lot of factors that make up this oppression, pressure. And the worst thing is that in our system, really, there is no room or there is no, uh, people don't understand what the role of culture is. It's something we've been calling for for years, but we run into an obstacle. Uh, we always run into obstacles. Our culture is seen as optional. Uh, culture is seen as a troublemaker and not as uh, something that's uh, truly uh, needed. So from day one, we're uh, being uh, uh, objectified we're uh, seen as uh, problem makers and this affects our own self-esteem and the uh, directors of theaters uh, can be frustrated because uh, you're doing uh, you're doing much more work than uh, an official at city hall somebody at department of culture because uh, you know what uh, dedication working in uh, theater takes uh, and the long working hours you need to decide, turn on a dime, a permanent uh, crisis management, especially in cultural institutions and theaters, and people don't understand that, you don't get uh, support. And again, briefly, uh, and it's getting worse, I'd say, it's not uh, getting any better. So there are uh, spaces of opposition and not uh, spaces that are uh, communicated or connected. The theater, the authority running the theater and so on, they uh, 
have their own uh, ends and so this lack of trust uh, they, and when this exclusive uh, narrative uh, appeared in, um, pub in the control mechanisms became uh, more intense uh, more strict uh, there's a lot of audits and control of everything and you have to explain yourself for everything I mean I could give uh, loads of stories but it's not just a story because it uh, strikes at uh, the uh, nature of your work and as a director of a theater who's responsible for an ensemble not just uh, structurally but also in terms of uh, motivation incentive sharing uh, certain ideas that the director brings uh, to a theater when they take responsibility for it artistically you need to put together an ensemble you need to motivate people you need uh, people need to see uh, the purpose of uh, the point of uh, working in a theater and not just uh, working nine to five um, or whatever there are uh, uh, great theaters and others that uh, don't uh, succeed to uh, that can't uh, achieve this it's a crisis uh, I have this experience of uh, being the subject of uh, false allegations uh, there was I was uh, there was a case against me it was purely political and uh, it cost me uh, years of my life and uh, left me traumatized uh, uh, the experience it was uh, uh, but that led me to ask a lot of questions still it's a sad picture uh, showing that uh, what we're doing is uh, um, full, full of a very subjective hope but in the uh, real uh, political po Polish political environment uh, none of it seems to matter and uh, actually it's very difficult well in our profession in our job uh, positive motivation matters uh, so much uh, that's why these uh, this discussions of abuse are about uh, talking about abuse is so important because abuse is always negative it uh, there's no um, room for anything affirmative and it's uh, systemic in a way public service the ethos responsibility these are uh, concepts that are cynically being abused uh, the, nobody in poland believes in a work ethos i think it's a tradition in a way where I had this uh, experience, I said something critical about the new director of the Burg Theater, or someone I'd known personally, I just didn't like uh, one of his shows, and I told uh, somebody from the West, well, uh, but, he's, but they said, what does it matter, he's the director of the Burg Theater. And then I realized that I was showing a very Polish mentality, a very Polish mindset. It's, um, you forget that certain positions, certain accomplishments are the outcome of a process. And in the West, the people realize this. If you're the director of an institution, it's because of a process, it's due to a whole career path. So you have greater responsibility and so on. But uh, here we don't have any that. What happened here is that uh, we either feel that people were promoted by chance or that uh, people were are oppressive or had always been oppressive i don't know if it's uh, to do to do with uh, polish mentality if it's a historical thing but we don't uh, respect ourselves so any question about uh, subjectivity about uh, mutual respect about avoiding abuse is a question that uh, each of us has to answer themselves and another thing i wanted so, and it's very dangerous, risky to discuss uh, this in terms of moral superiority. I have a uh, problem uh, judging the situations that uh, we're seeing now, because I prefer to think about times that I may have crossed a line or might cross a line, or how can I uh, protect a space in my institution that's not conducive to such behavior i mean we had uh we, we were getting to this in our theater we had less but now uh, the structure of the institution changed uh, there's a different uh, management uh, top management different priorities and the, one could say that the institution was made more formal more institutional so some there are uh, these cases but it's something you can live with anyway we have a systemic uh, problem 
Political culture in Poland being what it is, uh, things are going to uh, seed, are getting worse. If I can just cut in, uh, Ula wanted to say something, wanted to respond. Ula here. I think that this chain that uh, Bartek mentioned uh, is the problem is that it does exist, but it's the people who are who have power, who have the duty to get uh, over and try to stop it, try and break this chain. It's something we tend to forget. We forget that abusive behavior happens because abusers can be abusive, because they are in a position where they can abuse other people. And they feel that there will be no consequences or very little consequences. And that's why I have a problem talking about abuse against the directors, because I think that's not the way, not the direction we ought to think. Of course, in our trade union, we have to uh, defend or protect, uh, support our members. That's more than obvious. But when we encounter, when we're hearing these poignant uh, stories, and uh, for many people in the business, uh, this comes as no surprise. The names uh, given, the examples given, it's not something we didn't know about. A lot of people in the industry knew about things or uh, felt things, suspected things. No, all of everybody knew. I have a whole list of names, of uh, stories, and I just uh, ticked them off, uh, saying uh, confirmed or not confirmed. And in most cases, so I had this long list and I said confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. I, there wasn't a single story, a single report, a single name, where uh, people said that, no, it's not true, it's all hearsay, it's all uh, slander. On the contrary, I had people, I thought some stories were over the top, uh, were like um, rumors or just hearsay, they seemed so improbable. But then a few days ago, I got a call from people who confirmed it all, and then my jaw dropped. It's um, we've known for years, and that's the worst thing. We know and exactly. I have to say, but I have to say that I disagree because uh, abuse. Uh, Bartek, you said that abuse uh, doesn't uh, contain room for any affirmation. The uh, problem is that uh, abuse was a way of affirming the methods, and it still is. And these stories about having to crush, um, break people's spirit um, in school, how you have to take them to the edge so that they know what they're capable of. You have to uh, get them so anxious uh, that uh, their emotions are all out into the open. As uh, directors, we have to like, stomp on them. Uh, we can't grab them by the throat, uh, keep everything from them because they don't have the right to know everything. I could uh, list uh, rules which are by no means uh, secret, uh, but uh, that's um, uh, those are the rules on which all these myths uh, were uh, constructed. And that's uh, probably, I mean, we all want to be elect, we all want to be artists uh, who are famous, uh, who and uh, stories about people throwing uh, objects at other people or calling people bad words or hitting people or putting people through the ringer, a ringer and, uh, and getting them to cry, sweat and uh, produce uh, incredible uh, outcomes. Uh, we've all been raised uh, listening to these uh, stories. Uh, we wanted to join this uh, hallowed group of the elect, uh, perhaps uh, uh, this, some of it, it might be a Polish thing, but uh, how can you explain the story of Jan Fabre? Uh, art uh, contains uh, so many informal, or art uh, history and art theory based on the canon of elect uh, 
artists uh, contains uh, so many informal hierarchies. It's uh, difficult to question formal hierarchies. It's uh, difficult uh, to have a formal hierarchy that does not lead to abuse. But in Poland, we have so many informal hierarchies and uh, the means, uh, the end justifies the means uh, so often. Patricia, I think you wanted to add something. I wanted to respond to what uh, Bartar said, because you said that uh, theater is a space for hope, uh, something that inspires reflection. Well, yes, it is, but uh, here, in this uh, situation we're talking about, it's more of a space where viewers, the public, can, the viewers can uh, reflect. Uh, for us who are inside theaters, it uh, stinks it reeks of rotten eggs. And I don't find the argument convincing that uh, theater is an organization that has uh, problems, that has, that has problems with bureaucracy, after all, there's uh, very many uh, areas or um, which are affected by bureaucracy, where, where bureaucracy exists, uh, very many fields where uh, bureaucracy is a restraint or is a limitation, but uh, you can't really equate uh, problems of uh, theater directors with abuse um, or can't say that these problems can in some way lead or uh, to abuse. I'm thinking about changing the system. What does that mean? We're saying we need to change the system so uh, very often, but what happens now? So you have a group of uh, uh, theater directors who sit down and come up with a new system. I think we need to look for solutions, answers, and very basic things in the way we communicate. After all, uh, theater relies on uh, teamwork. It's not a one-man show. It's uh, we work together. And um, today we've learned, or many situations uh, that were written about and uh, discussed in the media, taught us to see relations differently, to see the relations in rehearsals, or professional uh, relations in the workplace, in the theater. And I guess that's something we ought to look at at the very beginning, uh, to take a look at ourselves, look at the way we communicate. I, it's nothing special uh, working in a team which has uh, communication on an equal footing, where people address uh, sensitive, difficult uh, subjects, but they communicate in a way that's not abusive, that doesn't involve bullying. I've worked in such teams, I know it's possible, and I know a lot depends on your own approach, and uh, perhaps we ought to uh, look at uh, people's predispositions. Are they qualified? Uh, do they have what it takes uh, to be a theater director? Um, do they have what it takes to uh, run a place that employs very sensitive people? Because in theater, it's uh, not enough uh, to uh, set it to define a uh, schedule or a timetable. Uh, you need to work with very sensitive people. And if we're looking at uh, systemic solutions, I'd uh, take a look at the way uh, theaters are run in terms of HR, in terms of uh, it's not um, something that uh, we've not uh, experienced before. If you look at uh, Polish theaters, you see that there are places with a normal working environment which is not abusive. So to summarize, I really see no connection between the problems faced by uh, directors of theaters. I know that abuse leads to abuse, uh, frustration leads to frustration, but it's really hard for me to find a, a direct link, a connection between the bureaucratic, uh, the red tape that uh, uh, theater directors uh, have to uh, deal with. But does that justify an uh, abusive uh, situation or abusing the um, company, uh, abusing in the chain of command? Maybe let's ask Monika Klonowska because she's heard all our. Uh, no, there's been some misunderstanding, Patricia. I didn't say it to justify abuse. I'm just uh, trying to say that the whole system is defective, is uh, sick, 
and it uh, affects the way an institution functions, and it's not the uh, hierarchy um, later trickles down, uh, and uh, the problems can appear at uh, various levels uh, because of the way things are arranged at the uh, top. Uh, so would you call the problems that have been described here as a psychologist, as someone who drafts uh, new codes of conduct or cultural institutions? Uh, do you see any uh, effective solutions? Well, you're raising the bar pretty high. We've heard so many stories. Uh, there's the individual perspective, as presented by uh, Patricia and Monika. Very difficult experience uh, from uh, one's your own position as observers uh, and from a group perspective. And a statement about uh, systemic issues, about uh, a deeply set organizational uh, structure where, as Patricia said, it doesn't depend just on your personal culture, your personal approach, but a lot depends on an organizational culture, what is uh, tolerated, what is condoned in a given institution, and that determines whether an institution uh, provides room for uh, abuse, uh, for a conspiracy of silence and uh, reluctance to expose that or not. Uh, given uh, in uh, many directors of theaters and uh, cultural institutions uh, don't know or refuse to admit that they have a statutory duty to oppose or to counteract abuse like bullying or discrimination, including sexual harassment. What does that mean? The legislator uh, doesn't uh, say, doesn't say that this has to be done when something uh, comes up when a situation is exposed, but uh, inst but uh, directors of theaters ought to create uh, conditions or regulations that anyone experiencing unwanted attention uh, can uh, relate to. In many theaters, we are in introducing the institution of a trusted representative. So you don't have to take your complaint uh, to the employer first, but you can uh, take it to a colleague, to your fellow, your co-worker, the trusted representative. And this shows that I mean, the idea is that these are people to whom uh, people, other people are willing uh, to take their problems, uh, people who are trained and know what to do. So uh, they can tell if the situation requires mediation because it's a conflict between individuals, or is it a relation, is it the oppressor-victim uh, relation where somebody is victimized, uh, somebody is being bullied, and it's a one-directional uh, 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 relation, and uh, the roles are fixed, and then you can uh, requires support and bring it to the intention of your employer. It can't ha one thing, it can't be uh, treated too formally, saying that we have a procedure and that's it. It's about uh, changing attitudes, attitudes that are um, have been existing for years. In theater, at least uh, that's the way I see it, I'm not in the theater family, but for a long time I've been working with uh, theaters a long time now, so maybe call me a distant relative, if you will. So what makes it difficult is that you have certain attitudes you have this mindset that it's all for art's sake, it's all for the sake of the production. And um, people say, you do whatever it takes. 
or the end justifies the means. And for many years, uh, this uh, was the rule, uh, namely, you ought to be happy as an actor, actress, uh, no matter what happens, because you're taking part in something special. You're working with a director, um, a male stage director who's famous and what have you, and uh, actors were afraid uh, to protest uh, so, as, so as not to uh, lose their like one shot or their uh, special the chance they were given. Now I'm working with uh, drama schools and theaters on changing attitudes. Attitudes are made up of three elements. It takes three things uh, to shape an attitude. Knowledge, know the bounds, the boundaries between behavior that can be difficult, uh, conflicting or uh, demanding or artistically and artistically justified and the and between uh, and uh, a behavior that is abusive so you need to know what's what you need to be able to distinguish then you have skills it takes skills Patricia said that you need to communicate in a non-abusive, non-violent way. You need to set boundaries. You have to know that if you draw the line and uh, the other party doesn't respect that, you can take it uh, further. You know uh, whom to turn to. Um, and you also need to be consistent. Uh, in claiming your rights and uh, enforcing your rights. Uh, so if there are people who know, and if there's an injured party, if there's somebody who's being bullied, then, as Monika said, there are people who know that they should uh, respond. Not a lot of people know this, uh, they think that it's a good uh, strategy to turn a blind eye if you don't respond, but if you don't respond to violence, then you're indirectly um, supporting the abuser, because the abuser uh, has a sense of impunity and uh, it um, they're only encouraged to uh, keep it up and even escalate uh, their behavior. The third uh, element uh, is emotions, uh, it, it's what explains, motivates the violence. Is it uh, low abuse? Is it low self-esteem? Is it because you're afraid that your weakness uh, will be um, brought to light? Is it because you feel that uh, your um, everything's permitted, that it's a type of aggression that's tolerated because it achieves, it helps you achieve artistic uh, goals. So if I can uh, tell you what to work on, it's these all it's all three elements uh, because knowledge itself is not enough. The most uh, difficult thing to work with, obviously, is emotion, uh, assuming that that's the way things have always been and uh, nobody uh, minded. Let's uh, let it go, um, what's the problem, let's not have a witch hunt. And so uh, very many things, uh, very many factors that uh, want to repress, that contribute to repressing uh, what happened and uh, reinstating or uh, restoring the status quo. I think that's something that requires a lot of very consistent work, but uh, since I have the floor, there's one thing I wanted to mention. It's a lot uh, easier in a formal professional uh, relationship. And here I have to say that uh, bullying it can be top down. So from um, a superior a bullying a subordinate, but you can also have horizontal uh, bullying. And as Ula said, you can also have uh, bottom-up uh, bullying, uh, you can have uh, people bullying the supervisors, the managers of an institution, but here you have regulations, uh, here employers have an obligation. However, it's different in drama schools and theater academies. Uh, here it's uh, very difficult, uh, there's a loophole here, and in 2018, the uh, Commissioner for Civil Rights, the Ombudsman, in a report on the experience of uh, harassment, uh, on the harassment and bullying of students, uh, guidelines and analysis, 
So in the, that report uh, points out that, uh, and let me just say, whereas uh, discrimination of uh, people uh, representing various uh, categories, I mean, if uh, if it's a clear-cut discrimination, then students uh, have rights uh, to have recourse, but the Act on Equal Treatment does not uh, protect one from sexual harassment or harassment on the grounds of uh, gender or sexual orientation if this was at a drama school in the course of higher learning. That's uh, something I find uh, mm, shocking, that's uh, preposterous. I really uh, can't, don't know how such a loophole uh, still exists and uh, I think we're we need uh, uh, to have to change the regulations. Monika, a question uh, to Monika Jerosińska, because what Monika said just now, um, all of that, all these things uh, happened during your diploma show or in the run-up to your diploma show, and I think uh, that was the first time a well-known, a uh, respected uh, director was accused uh, because you showed solidarity. So can you uh, tell us, because you uh, joined the uh, company at some point, right, at uh, somewhere, uh, and you saw a group of people in crisis. It was uh, a little more complicated than that. Uh, at, it began, so first the uh, girl who um, played the role and who complained was uh, taken off the show because she wasn't coping and that was the official uh, version uh, confirmed uh, by the uh, Dean of Studies and the director of the diploma piece, then we lost touch, a replacement was uh, found, I was invited and I'd never met the uh, actress I replaced, and I kind of became part of the uh, collusion of the conspiracy of silence. I started rehearsing, I was validated, it was an ego trip, I thought it was uh, all uh, for the best, everybody uh, thought it was it was convenient. Uh, everybody thought it was uh, in her best interest that she wasn't in the show anymore. And it's something that we hadn't thought about sufficiently, uh, and we all were so deep in this abuse and this system of abuse that I needed a shock. Uh, I needed because my main uh, trigger, what uh, led me to quit, was a show directed by Karolina Szczypek, uh, a few songs about abuse in theater. Uh, the show's not about sexual harassment, it's more about uh, symbolic and economic abuse, but uh, watching after, after, after seeing the show, I couldn't stop thinking, I, it's, it made uh, something come out, it made me realize uh, something that I had had in the back of my mind. So I decided to uh, have a talk with that uh, actress, actually that was the first thing I wanted to do, but it's something I had to grow into, I had to uh, wait until I was ready. And then there was a point, a time, when I realized that if I quit the show, if I walked off the set, the show would be cancelled. And I think that was also a, mm, an important juncture. I uh, thought about ends justifying means and all that. It no longer matters what you say on stage if, it's, if it was built on violence. So actually it's uh, so hypocritical that it uh, really makes all the uh, values, everything said on stage, irrelevant. And when the second report uh, came in that validated, that substantiated what the first uh, girl said, there was the problem of um, uh, the uh, premiere, the first night. The mm, director was taken off the show, we were left alone. The procedures uh, came to an end and we were still alone, basically. So I think that 
A, seri a major problem that uh, people don't really see, and I don't think it can be covered by procedures, is that in this specific case, or at least that's the way I see it, we had the myth of a great director, an artist, which came into play, because if it hadn't been Pavel Passini, but a graduate uh, fresh out of a drama school, then the complaint uh, would have been uh, more credible uh, or it would have been treated more seriously. And uh, this is a notorious, uh, prominent case, but I uh, saw a lot of situations, I witnessed a lot of situations before, where it was inconvenient for the authorities to respond to complaints against somebody who's a popular artist or who's a personal friend of the authorities or a former um, lecturer at a drama school. And so these are uh, case. and when that happens, uh, that person is just moved to a, another school because you really don't know what to do with them. And and I also wanted to uh, follow up on what Ula said before. Abuse happens because there's nothing stopping abusers, because it, uh, there's nothing stopping abusers. It's not uh, prohibited. Uh, the, uh, we had a code of conduct. Uh, when the Passini situation uh, took place, and there were procedures, but then again, nobody really told us. Uh, nobody uh, had uh, discussed what happened. And uh, you're saying that uh, nobody believed uh, Małgorzata, she was, uh, that's what they told her, they said, we don't believe you, um, Małgorzata the actress uh, who brought the case first, so that's the attitude that uh, Monika mentioned, but, but they believed uh, it when the second uh, actress came forward. Uh, ultimately, the uh, show was cancelled, it had to be cancelled. And um, I think that apart from implementing procedures, we need to uh, make sure we know how to recognize uh, abuse when we see it. Students, actors and authorities in every institution because and there's so much noise uh, around us, we're up to our necks in it. We really don't even know that it's a bad thing. We can't uh, recognize it for um, being a bad thing. If somebody intuitively, I also followed my conscience and my intuition. So if somebody uh, takes the risk and says, hey, stop, enough, something bad is happening here, it's usually too late by that time. May I? I wanted to respond to what Monika said about changing attitudes. I think that is important, but a lot also depends on uh, changing collective attitudes. I think we need to learn a new conformity, a new kind of conformity. Uh, up until recently, at least up until something cracked, uh, we had this uh, conformity of uh, intimidation and silence, and now we need a conformity of care, tenderness and attention, uh, mindfulness. It's not utopian, I think, but in abusive schools, you can't, you can't expect abusive schools to uh, produce non-abusive artists, uh, so we need to start early. Uh, the abusive nature of uh, schools is also something that uh, the system is trying to change. Uh, for instance, hazing is uh, illegal, or uh, by hiring ethical counselors. I think this is a step in the right direction. But we need dialogue, because we're just uh, starting out here, It's uh, we're just taking our first steps. One source of uh, hope is something I said before we went online. I remember from uh, childhood how uh, we were slapped around in uh, elementary school, our teachers uh, slapped us around, but then that stopped at some point because uh, society just said no, refused to accept it any longer. And this uh, new conformity, this new attitude is something that I think we 
really need. It's something, uh, it's a new behavior that we all have to uh, learn. I've uh, written, I've taken some notes, uh, and there are a couple of things I wanted to uh, comment on, especially what Monika Yaroshinska said. I think that sometimes uh, we don't know, we can't, don't know that something is bad, and then uh, people accused of improper behavior say, but uh, what do you mean, that's my working method? Everything was okay, it uh, produces results, it uh, delivers the goods, but uh, sometimes we know things are bad, but uh, we tend to think that the uh, opening night or first night or a uh, show uh, must go on. Or we were not sure, we we don't trust our instincts uh, when they tell us we don't want to be treated that way. And we think, but that's the way it is, that's the way things are. I'll just uh, knuckle under and uh, to in the hope of achieving something great. Of course, uh, this mystique of uh, great uh, directors uh, does is an important factor. So these great artists, uh, like I said, we all want to be part of the pantheon, we all want to, but it also has a lot to do with how we don't really talk about the rules, uh, we don't set the ground rules when uh, starting work, and that's something I'd like um, to say when that's something we can do. Mm. Even now, okay, I, I'm talking to people and say, why not, uh, at the beginning of every process, everybody has a different approach, uh, everybody has a different process, uh, we work with different uh, texts, and uh, these require different approaches, so it's, um, it's different when you're doing a comedy as opposed to a tragedy. Uh, but uh, can't, why can't we begin by sitting down and uh, starting the conversation by saying uh, how we want to go about it? It's also um, something I ought to uh, take into account and all stage directors. So actually, uh, our heads are full of uh, like brought up to believe that uh, directors are leaders, uh, somebody who has a vision, they're the captain of the ship, they can't show weakness, that's what you're taught in school. And we don't think about the position, the role of uh, stage directors, of directors, as a function, as uh, something which resembles which is like management, which has something to do with facilitation of creative processes, of a group process. It's a moderating uh, artistic processes. We, I mean, yes, the director can be a genius, they can be visionary, but they, that per, they should also take themselves and the people they're working with through the process uh, painlessly. I mean, we don't uh, agree to have uh, animals uh, hurt uh, when uh, making movies, but we agree to people being hurt uh, when making uh, theater productions. And if we introduced uh, something and apologies for the psycho speak, uh, if we were to have like a contract at the beginning, it doesn't have to be written down, but it can be uh, talked over and saying how we want to work. This would create a uh, space of uh, consent, uh, because mm, I think we don't, I mean, uh, there is this uh, semblance uh, that uh, a negotiable space exists uh, regarding the working conditions, some sort of room for uh, negotiation between the fair people at various levels in the artistic process. It's not just about actors, it's also other people. We have, we don't feel we can negotiate uh, our working methods, we can't say that we're not happy with this or that. We can't say, I don't want to do this, I don't want to uh, get there. 
this way. I want to get there another way. And if we uh, admit some degree of consent, we'll have some partnership. And if we start a discussion, a conversation on the methods, on the uh, ways we communicate, this will have been a step forward. Monika Jarosińska, yes, I'm thinking, there's one thing I'm thinking about, and I agree that it is important to set the rules, because uh, that, that's a way of protecting of um, students, actors, and directors. When I'm reading, and I'm glad that this is uh, coming up, when I read interviews with intimacy consultants, I like this uh, vision, I like having something like a filter, a person who's a bit of a filter, where uh, directors have to uh, present their vision instead of saying, deciding at some point that uh, actors have to undress in the process, some point in the process that actors have to be undressed. So I think that's a very good uh, solution. But I'm also thinking about uh, changing uh, the mentality. I remember some four years ago, maybe, at the Krakow uh, Drama School, there was a conference uh, called In Search of Method. It was all about different methods. Uh, there was a discussion afterwards. And I said, but what about looking after yourself? I said that it's important uh, for uh, students uh, to take care of themselves. And then the director said, we're not a school of psychotherapy, you'll start work in theatre soon and nobody will care about that. But I think that uh, we need to change the attitude, we need to change the approach, and that's what uh, Patricia said, That and realized that this isn't uh, normal. And I'm seeing this uh, feedback loop, uh, hazing will haze you because uh, then you'll uh, manage when things get worse, it'll make you tough. In school you're told uh, you'll uh, start working in theater and things will be even tougher, and in theater you're told, well, that's the way things are and uh, deal with it. But I think that uh, today the rector wouldn't have given me, wouldn't give me the answer she gave me uh, four years ago. And it's a shame it took such radical steps. But I think that it doesn't pay off simply. What I want to say is that, I mean, not everything came out into the open, but uh, it's been publicized, it's been exposed, and I think that uh, the people who are gatekeepers, who look after the interests of institutions, see that it doesn't pay off, and they'll think twice before um, letting it happen again. I think Ula wanted to add something. I agree, I agree, I realize that it's uh, difficult uh, to say that you're not happy with something if you're in a subordinated uh, position. Uh, there was a code of conduct, but I think that codes of conduct uh, don't work if we don't know what to do if codes fail. So we have to know uh, who to talk to and where to go if uh, codes and procedures don't work. And that levels the playing field uh, when you're dealing with a hierarchy. I wanted to respond to Ula and Monika and say that it's not a utopia. It's called a contract, also in theater academies. There was a chancellor, a rector, uh, who, after uh, a workshop with me, uh, told the media that uh, contracts uh, were important. A contract, a compact, is something you sign in times of war, not in times of peace. You can't assume that everything will be, uh, it'll be all wine and roses. But in a group uh, process, uh, with many people involved, and I uh, uh, train them, so you contract uh, three things. You define what you'll be doing, you define the methods that'll be used, instead of, oh, I had this idea, and you can't protest, and you also define the principles. Uh, that's what uh, Patricia said about the way we communicate. And all of that uh, defines or sets the 
ground rules or uh, cooperation, and it also makes evaluation possible, assessment. Uh, but if we see that it doesn't work, and uh, getting back to what Patricia said, it's not a, it can't be a compromise, it has to be confrontation, where you say, I disagree, I object, uh, that's not what the deal was, I don't accept these methods, these methods were not in the contract. Obviously, some people will say that it's a question of artistic freedom being uh, curtailed, but people are, uh, think, are treated as subjects and not objects. They know what they're getting into, what they've agreed to, how things will work, and they also know when things aren't working the way they should. When I um, talk to people in culture, I um, hear that uh, that never happened before. And it's a feature, it's a trait of uh, many institutions and informal groups, including uh, theater companies or art collectives. And uh, contracts ought to be the basis for uh, cooperation and partnership. It doesn't uh, rule out hierarchies, but it just uh, contains clear job descriptions. I obviously agree with everything that's being said here, but sometimes I get the sense that it's a bit of a one-sided picture, because I think that Ula, I think Ula, that for a long time, the myth that uh, directors are all-powerful, that uh, that's long uh, obsolete, that's uh, no longer the case. Monika, you have uh, uh, you have tough t your experience. What you experienced was tough, but your experience is a bit limited because you're not out of school yet. And uh, so now you have uh, young artists uh, setting up uh, companies. It's becoming uh, not that formalized. These are difficult uh, things, uh, contracts and uh, s regulations. If it comes up in natural discourse, if we're more attuned, if we're if we uh, care for one another in a natural way, fine. But I think that's a precondition, uh, that the mutual respect is a precondition when working. It's my personal experience, but also my experience at Wajnyanova. We had the dream teams. Uh, Pavel Passini did two shows at our theater. I think the first one was uh, 12 years ago. It was called Resting. And I didn't see anything that you could call reprehensible, nor did anything like that come to my attention, but uh, that might have been uh, due to relations in the uh, company. Uh, one thing I've been, I, I think, first of all, uh, people uh, working on a project uh, have to uh, show one another trust in a place of confidence, in a place of trust, uh, agree that they're setting off on a journey together. And I don't know at what point that happens, but even if, I mean, they, they stay together, uh, even if the production doesn't turn out great. Uh, sometimes things crack, sometimes uh, you can't, uh, things can't uh, stand the pressure. Uh, for three years, I was responsible for the artistic program of the Słowacki Theater in Krakow, which is a large uh, theater, a large structure. I felt that the most uh, value uh, emerged uh, in an artistic uh, project, uh, that this capital was generated when uh, artists were able, in a relational and responsible way, to build a team. And in our theater, in the theater, that's also something we uh, pay attention to. We were speaking about uh, specific uh, cases of abuse, that happened lately, but the, this is something that's been observed. I mean, remember, whenever a conflict uh, comes up, there's uh, a role for the director of the theater uh, to play. Uh, conflicts are reported, the director tries to find some kind of uh, balance or mediate uh, between the stage director and the actor. Right, uh, you were recently criticized for sharing a post by Jacek Poniedziałek. 
and there was a whole discussion about you condoning abuse as the producer of that uh, show. Can I respond to that? The story with Jacek Poniedziałek, I think he wanted to... I was criticized by people who were not involved in the artistic process or who didn't know all the details of the situation, but I don't really understand uh, how that's uh, connected, uh, uh, how what we're talking about uh, has to do with my sharing a post by Jacek Poniedziałek. I was just uh, referring to what you said about the role of uh, the director. The problem escalated in Warsaw, as some of the rehearsals were in Kraków, and I have to tell you, that I had no information about there being an unresolvable conflict, uh, anything that went beyond the usual artistic uh, tension. I was told that they were quarreling, fighting, but uh, that uh, they always managed to uh, work it out in the end. And the situation was, I mean, obviously, clearly, if the situation had escalated, and I think that Karolina Ochab, the director of Nowy Teatr in Warsaw, also did the right thing, because her attempt to uh, use uh, mediation and uh, apply disciplinary proceedings and uh, do it by the book, that's important that she didn't uh, brush it under the carpet, sweep it under the carpet. Uh, I think I keep uh, wondering uh, to what extent uh, systemic uh, solutions can prevent abuse from happening. My experience uh, tells me that regulations, a lot of uh, regulations are not an adequate uh, response until uh, something changes in people, which I think is happening already. I'm being positive here, I'm being and uh, responding positively to this uh, discussion and people bringing the issue up. But I also have a bit of some doubts uh, as to whether regulations might not entirely be helpful, might, uh, and just something that I'm throwing out there. I wanted to, uh, one important thing about um, standing up for and uh, not standing up for, I, um, uh, or speaking out in, I, uh, I had a lot of people tell me, Pavel, I've known him for 20 years, he's a nice guy. But uh, when I thought about it, I realized that you know, these were people who were peers of uh, Pavel Passini, who were on an equal footing. Uh, but here, uh, it's a student-teacher uh, relationship or employee-director relationship. And th I, that's why I think uh, people stand up to um, defend somebody. It's hard for me to imagine if you have a stage director and a theater director or a theater director, even if, even professionally, I mean, it's hard for me to imagine a stage director uh, bullying a theater director, abusing their power. But there's much uh, greater uh, room for that if it's not on an equal footing. So if it's not between equals, and that's what we should uh, focus on, I think. Ula? I have another list of issues I wanted to comment on. Uh, first, uh, the issue of uh, restricting or curtailing, uh, putting a lid on creative energy. I forgot, I forget who said that, but, uh, and this is not really the time and place, uh, but a few years ago, after 12 years of research on creativity, there was a book uh, published by a group of uh, academics uh, headed by Linda Hill. The book was called Collective Genius. And so they studied uh, companies, uh, small business and uh, large uh, corporations in terms of the ability to maintain constant uh, innovation. 
So in what circumstances uh, collective creativity can continue to produce results in a comfortable way so that the team, the collective doesn't uh, fall apart? So what it takes for that to uh, work, and I think that's a lesson we uh, ought to learn in theater. And as for contracts uh, uh, being uh, adopted at the beginning, is that does that restrict uh, the creative juices? No, uh, because if a contract can be negotiated at the beginning, it can be negotiated uh, later on. And if a contract uh, provides for some flexibility, that means we uh, can change the methods, but only after we discuss it. So if we decide to uh, go off, set off in a different direction, if we're exploring the Amazon, for instance, uh, we need to sit down and uh, take into account, listen to the grassroots uh, voices. And uh, responding to what Bartek said about mutual respect, the problem is, I mean, we're a small, tight-knit uh, community, but we're uh, traumatized, and in a traumatized uh, a community that's so affected that has all these recent uh, all this recent uh, trauma uh, to work through it'll take us a long time before we rebuild that uh, respect and uh, before we allay our I mean our fears are allayed before we don't have that anxiety especially the younger generation which lost uh, one year two years because of the pandemic so uh, it's uh, very difficult uh, for them to enter to get into the profession as it is and expecting that if we that if we don't set the rules and if without setting the rules we can build a team built on a uh, mutual respect that's uh, difficult because you can't uh, I mean it's like respect Expecting respect from uh, kids in orphanages, you have to work, you have to earn their respect. And uh, responding to what uh, Bartek said about there being no information, I, I find it interesting. And it's true, as uh, I'm, I'm also an activist, fighting uh, abuse against women, and I uh, ran workshops for uh, people affected by abuse. And what's interesting is that uh, victims are very selective uh, when they choose uh, the people they tell what happened to them. Uh, they uh, they won't tell everyone what they don't like and what hurts most. I mean, I was often surprised when, for instance, I knew that someone was uh, guilty of some form of abuse, and uh, I thought that, and I saw that somebody who seemed uh, more familiar with the business wasn't aware of that. Later, when I spoke to actors, I mean, some uh, rumors, uh, some stories. Uh, make it higher up, others don't, because uh, these are people talking over a cigarette, uh, complaining in the dressing room, a uh, kind of toxic, uh, dwelling on uh, things in the hallways, but they don't take it higher up, because they're afraid of doing that. If we want to know where things are going wrong, then let's not talk among ourselves, let's talk to stage managers and uh, dressers, because uh, what happens to actors and actresses, that's one thing, but you have a lot of other people, and the way stage managers, dressers, uh, technicians, uh, prop uh, masters, or, but again, like I said, let's uh, look at the uh, stage managers and uh, dressers, let me just uh, briefly respond, but that assumes that there is that the director is trusted because uh, stage managers in a um in the theater tradition are part of the creative team and they're not always the person at the interface between management and the creative uh, team it's always bad when you learn that uh, you weren't informed or they but that part uh, of the rehearsal process that took part in Krakow wasn't that uh, intense uh, because it was just the very last uh, rehearsals before the festival. 
And I'm uh, wondering whether if there's a company that, uh, whether companies uh, try to uh, deal with things on their own, they don't want to uh, let it out into the open, uh, they don't want to um, give the impression that the process is difficult, is problematic. I think Monika also mentioned this kind of self-censorship. We have this uh, image of our profession as directors or the uh, rules of the game that can be intimidating and that can discourage uh, people from um, calling out certain behavior. So uh, the question is uh, when do we are when do we get serious about the community of people in theater? Because this community uh, spirit is something that uh, we keep talking about, but we know that it uh, includes or covers up a lot of abuse uh, mechanisms that can be uh, customary uh, questions of habit or ingrained. I'm saying, that this is gradually cracking, but it will still endure for a while. And another very important thing, this traumatization is uh, coming up now. As a community, having experienced uh, the pandemic uh, very harshly, um, very, and uh, now public narrative, in public narrative there's a uh, discourse, there's a uh, pressure there's this uh, questioning of the uh, position of the art world. And uh, I suppose this leads to even greater tension. But the uh, young people who are um, just starting out in the profession today, I really can't imagine how difficult it is for them and what uh, hopes, what unfulfilled uh, hopes uh, they have now having uh, spent uh, two years in a state of suspension without uh, making that leap. And that's why we love diploma shows uh, so much, because we see the energy, we see the hope, we see the enthusiasm there. And all of a sudden that was uh, cut short, uh, that was taken away from them. So I'm sure we're looking at a process of rethinking, of thinking what to do with those two years that got lost along the way, maybe. Sorry for cutting in, but I don't think I made myself clear. Bartek, you said directors need to be trusted. That's exactly what I had in mind. If we, and uh, apologies for uh, putting the two of us in the same basket for uh, assuming that we're in the same position, but if we expect uh, trust from the people who answer to us, then we're out of line. That's um, as people in pos position of power in a hierarchy, we speak, we can't speak of mutual reciprocal trust and assume that it's a partnership. It's not. We have to earn people's uh, trust and respect. And if the industry is uh, so traumatized, then, as Monika Klonowska said, we need mechanisms, we need outside the people who would be a uh, safety valve uh, between us and the people who are afraid to tell us that they're afraid of us. But even if there's nothing wrong with uh, what we do, then the system is stopping them from turning to the authorities because they've learned that the authorities are the problem. That's what we have to realize because otherwise we won't go beyond our expect expecting that somebody will tell us that we're doing something wrong. I think Monika wanted to say something. Yes, I have a lot of thoughts in my head. I hope I'll be able to express them somehow. I second what Ula said, because I think it's a general problem. If something isn't reported, does it mean it didn't happen? Rather, it speaks to uh, fear, It's uh, that's one thing, it's because people are afraid to report it. And as for trust, I don't have a lot of experience, but the experience I have, and I'll fall back on that, 
tells me, I got a lot of respect from Pavel during the diploma show. Nothing bad happened to me, which doesn't mean that he didn't hurt someone else. And nobody noticed. It's not black and white, is what I wanted to say. We assume that we respect one another, we trust one another, and we can even believe or we feel that we do. But before, uh, in a response to what uh, Bartek said about whether procedures will uh, protect us, I think it has to be uh, connected with a mentality, a change of mindset. But if an abuser risks uh, consequences that'll be so severe that they'll stop him, that will change mentality. So things, uh, if things aren't being reported, that means the whole system is geared to a situation where the abuser wins. And Ula took the words out of my mouth uh, when she said that we need to remember everybody else, the uh, stage managers, uh, producers, assistants, well, I won't uh, name names, but there are institutions where producers uh, quit on a regular basis, or everybody uh, quits, and there's, that means there's something wrong, and not necessarily with those uh, producers. I just wanted to put it out there. Uh, Patricia, then Monika Klonowska, and uh, we're over time, so I think we'll be winding up. I just wanted to make it uh, clear, again, based on my experience, the fact that I stayed silent uh, wasn't because I wanted to do anything about the artistic atmosphere, it's because I was uh, intimidated and oppressed. So I that we're not, we don't stay silent and we don't, and the reason we don't quit uh, the job or the profession is because we've uh, suffered so much, it, uh, it's taken so much uh, out of us that we need uh, counseling. It's a problem for, it's a mental, psychic problem for, psychological problem for people who are exposed to abuse. And not everybody in theater uh, realizes that, I mean, I don't wish that on anyone. And in uh, closing, let me say that I really hope that this dysfunctional family will go into therapy together and that uh, will at least start talking and uh, communicating in the right direction, and I hope that we'll begin to understand what victims feel. I think it's, we need a systemic action so that the individual tragedies that uh, Patricia mentioned, for instance, uh, don't uh, happen again, especially as uh, in theater you have people who are very sensitive, so one psychological strategy of coping with abuse is uh, to adapt, and that's also uh, something you see in victims of abuse. The self-defense uh, mechanisms are switched off, especially when you feel that there is no way out, and uh, so that's something that can happen. And you, you tell yourself, I'll make it, I'll make it, I can take it. And uh, people from the outside see that uh, that person is uh, at the um, end of their tether, but uh, they keep saying, oh, don't uh, say what uh, you just saw, because uh, he'll leave me or I'll get fired. So uh, in this situation we have now, which... Uh, exposed, which brought out a lot of uh, neglect over the years, a lot of uh, attitudes uh, when now that we're uh, in the face of individual tragedy, it's not enough, uh, or individual respect is not enough, uh, we need systemic uh, changes 
that would uh, implement these uh, safety you know, valves, these checks and balances, uh, allowing people to say, I disagree, I object, I don't want to be treated that way, I don't want to, I don't want uh, a stage manager, a dresser, or anybody to be treated that way, and I don't want young stage directors to be treated that way, because those are uh, situations that I've encountered. I've seen uh, aggressive actors really uh, hurting a, a young um, stage uh, director and undermining uh, the uh, authority of a young of another young uh, stage director so it can uh, go in different ways but as you said patricia it's most uh, difficult uh, when it uh, happens in a situation of uh, in a chain of command in a situation of uh, hierarchical dependence uh, thank you very much for being with us uh, this evening and i want to thank our viewers and listeners i hope uh, this uh, conversation will continue let's start uh, talking there's uh, nothing to be afraid of it's not a lynch mob it's not a witch hunt and uh, a few days ago i had a talk with christian lupa who's uh, very moved by what's uh, happening he wants to talk he answers uh, questions he's uh, following uh, this discussion so all the best and uh, thank you for this uh, evening on behalf of the theater and everybody involved in the Forum for the Future of Culture. I wanted to thank you uh, for your contributions, for all the opinions you've shared with us tonight. I also want to thank our viewers and everybody who's taking part in the discussion on Facebook. All the best again, and uh, we hope that these discussions and all the others uh, will be continued also in person at Teatr Powszechny. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Good night.